to determine where we want to cover, we want to do a few things. Uh, essentially, we want to have the character uh, have a line of sight traced to some place that is fairly low and have that blocked, meaning that there's some low cover, but then having a point that's slightly higher that is still able to have line of sight vision to the player to make sure that we are able to shoot from that cover. So we essentially want to do two different things. Um, to start off, we want to have a EQS pawn, and this is the pawn from uh, uh, the civilian example. So if you're just joining, how to get a EQS pawn in is you just make a blueprint class, and you type in EQS, and you get an EQS testing pawn over here that you can create from. And then inside of that, this is what you have. There's basically nothing here. And in the details, if you put it into the world, then you get uh, this grouping here for EQS where you can use a query template uh, to determine something. So that's what we have done here, although we have a little bit of um, uh, code in our blueprint or our EQS pawn already that does this specific thing, but we will be changing that up. Uh, let's just delete this again. So what we essentially want to do, so if you haven't followed the earlier episodes, just shortly, an EQS pawn just allows us to do some um, queries with different points in the world against different uh, frames of reference and make determinations on which points should be valid to uh, take into consideration and which should be scored for a higher value to be a possible location to walk to. And that is what we are going to be doing today. If you want to have a more in-depth explanation about that there are tutorials about it in the EQS uh, tutorial series uh, so for now what we want to do is we want to set up this uh, basic situation so we can clear out this find hiding spot that it had before and instead we can go to our uh, our folder where we have our uh, blueprint things. Uh, let's see here. So the soldier, the BP soldier, uh, behavior should be fine. So in here we can make a uh, create an EQS query basically. So we create our EQS query by right clicking, going to artificial intelligence, and then choosing environment query. And we can call this uh, EQ find other locations because that is essentially what it will be doing so inside of here we have the ability to add a generator uh, what we will be doing however instead of using the the default generators that we have here or even uh, the custom one that we created in the previous example we are going to be making our own generator for this because we want to be generating uh, a set of points that we want to say that these are the points that are uh, valid for us to try and go to and then from that set of points we want to do some scoring to see which ones are the best and one way to generate or to create uh, these dynamic or uh, specific points is to create a generator so instead of having these we have one of our own so by right clicking going to blueprint class and we type in generator you can see we get a bp custom generator here that well actually that no that's wrong that's uh, the one I created before. And we get the environmental query generator blueprint base. That's the one we want. Uh, so this is a generator, so we can call it uh, environmental query generator, EGQ. I'm not entirely sure about the naming conventions of all of these things, but whatever you choose to name them, try to be consistent with them. So that it becomes easier for you to see uh, where your different classes are. We'll try this uh, for now and see how this works. And this is going to be generating our uh, cover locations. Like so, we can open that up. Now inside of here, we have one function that's overridable. It's the do item generation. And this is what that looks like. And it is essentially uh, generating a 
this function is meant to generate a bunch of um, results for us to use later on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our class defaults here. And since we are going to be creating uh, locations, that meaning vectors, we're going to go to the generated item type over here and we're going to change this from actor to a point and compile and save. And now we can start doing our logic. So essentially what we're, we want to be doing is a few things. The plan I have is that we have this character, uh, the AI, which wants to find a location to cover from a specific target. So once it has that target, it will try to determine between itself and that target to see is there any kind of obstruction between us that it can be used using for cover. And in this specific case, we're just going to be making logic that will find uh, some half height covers, sort of something you can cover behind but shoot over. Uh, so we essentially want to have a few points generated around ourselves and then have all of those points directed towards our person we want to take cover from. That will give us a few different um, line traces that we can use as uh, suggestive point locations. All of the traces that will interact with a cover we will then make use of to make a second line trace by raising the start point a little bit above, meaning like eye height, and then tracing from that location to the character again, making sure that we have a obstruction that's low, meaning a cover, but we're also still able to see over it because the visibility is clear uh, above. Uh, so that's what we will be doing, and we will be doing it in a few different steps. Um, in an attempt to organize this a little better, we will be using a sequence node. Uh, sequence, like so. And we'll add a few pins to this. So, one of the things we will be doing first is to determine if we have a target. And we'll do that on the first pin. After that, we will actually be going through the, the logic to create our cover points. So we'll start off with the cover points and then we will work our way back towards the, the target later on. Um, to do this we will be needing a few variables for us to make use of. So we can start off by creating a local variable. We can call it local and call it uh, vectors. This will be our result that we actually make use of. So make sure that it is of the type vector and that it's a type of array. Uh, in addition to that, we want to have something that I will be calling point distance. And point distance will be a uh, float and it will be a single value. And this will be this is just to make it a little bit modular so you can tweak it a little bit and have it like um, configured in a way that might suit you better. Because in this specific example, I'm going to be creating a three by three grid, meaning nine different points around the player. And the point distance will be the distance between these points uh, that we generate essentially. So this specific variable we will have a default value at 300, meaning three meters of distance in between them. In addition to that, we will be wanting a midpoint, like so. And the midpoint will be calculated. Actually, we will come back to that one later. I think it makes more sense that way. Uh, and then we can have a last one, which we will call um, numbers number of points per axis seems fine and we'll make that one an integer and we'll have it as the three so this is the one that defines the three by three uh, dimensions of the the grid so that that is the start of it um, in addition to that we also want to have our uh, target so we'll call this a um, i should be calling all of these local to make sure that we know that they're local but yeah, you can do that if you want to be proper. 
um, cover from target. So this is the, the target that we want to take cover from. So this will be a... Um, we can have an actor reference for this one. That, that should be fine. Like so. So let's start doing some of the logic then that we will be needing to do. Now, the first step would be to generate the grid that I talked about. So we'll move this return node out of the way for now. So the step one here will be uh, that part essentially. And what we will be using is a loop. And we'll just be using a for loop, no, while loop, no, why am I not seeing it? It's just called for loop, my bad. Uh, essentially a predetermined amount of uh, steps that you want to loop through. And this is where our number of points per axis comes in. So we get that and we subtract this by one because if we have a three by three, we want to go between first index zero to two. So that's what this becomes. And this will be representing either the X or the Y axis, doesn't really matter which in this case. Uh, but regardless from all of them, we want to have another loop, a for loop. And we want to be having that one going by the exact same measures, meaning that it will be a a uniform grid as in three by three or four by four and that is pretty much it now from here we need to uh, do some of the calculations so uh, we could be doing some um, uh, debug drawings draw debug sphere to see where our different points are generated, just to make sure that we're doing it properly. Uh, but essentially what we want to do, we want to take an index and we want to subtract this. But if we do that, we get a integer. And what we want to have in the end here is going to be a bunch of float values. So what we can do is we can take a float. We can get mid float, we can do a minus we'll get the subtract it will be of this type like so and if we plug in the integer now it will be uh, actually it probably would have worked the same if we did the other way around it's a little bit different in unreal engine 4 than unreal engine 5 here but essentially we want to have a node that has an exit of the type float here and we'll go through all of these in the end so your understanding all of different parts and I'll just go create this and you can follow along and then we'll explain what is being done. So this one we want to multiply and we want to multiply this by our point distance like so and this we then want to add and what we want to add it with is a uh, an already existing value for a vector. So we'll be coming back to this, but this is essentially what we want to be doing. And we want to be doing this twice. We want to do this for the other uh, loop as well. So this one will be going in here. So uh, if you imagine we have um, three points, a three by three, uh, what you want to do is you want to have uh, to be able to handle a uniform uh, positioning between both uh, to the left and to the right of the character. We want to have sort of a midpoint value so that we can determine uh, half of the index is going to the left and half of the index is going to the right of the character and also uh, half of the index is going above and half of the index is going below when it comes to the y direction. What I mean by that is if we have uh, three points in our axis for x, 
we want to have the first one to the left, the last one to the right, and the middle one in the middle. Uh, and if we had four of them, we wanted to have two of them to the left and two of them to the right, and then there would be like a middle gap uh, for the um, um, for between the character and the points, essentially. And how we determine that we can actually do here, so it maybe becomes a little bit clearer. But uh, we set our midpoint value to be a value that is the number of points per axis minus one. And then we multiply this by a value that is, and let's see, convert pin to float. If you were using a uh, Unreal Engine 4, you can't convert like this. You would have to have a multiplier of float first and then add this in probably but i'm sure you can figure that out but essentially this is what we want to do uh, this is interesting though i was expecting this one to just be frame time structure that's not what i expect this to be okay let's see if we can sort this out if we were to have a float and we do this i'm just gonna get this temporarily like so. So now we have a float times float. So if we had something like this, then we get the proper value, and then we can put it like that. But we want, don't want this value, we want to have a 0 0.5 here. This is essentially what I'm out to find and create. So um, the midpoint will represent the, the index value that is in the middle when it comes to the x and the y axis. So if we were to have a three by three, if we take three minus one, that's two, divided by half, since we're multiplying by half. So divided by two is what I'm saying. <laughs> so then we get to two and then we get to one, that becomes our midpoint. So our midpoint here is going to be one, meaning uh, index zero would be to the left, index one would be in the middle, and index two would be to the right, because the midpoint that is one over here is determining the middle. If we instead had four points per axis, that means that we would have four minus one, which is three, divided by two, which is 1.5, so midpoint would be 1.5. That means that the zero index would be to the left, the one index would be to the left, this is 1.5, so that the two index would be to the right and the three index would be to the right. So the midpoint just determines which index, uh, if, if an index is to the left or to the right of uh, this, basically. Uh, hopefully that made sense. If not, uh, it will probably make more sense in a little bit, I hope, uh, when we continue with the logic. So we're taking the index and we're subtracting it to make sure that we are getting if it's something that should be on a negative scale, meaning to the left, or a positive scale, meaning if it's to the right. And then we're multiplying by the point distance because the differences between these will be how much the point distance should be influencing them. And then the result from that will be our uh, offset in X or Y. So what we need to do to get uh, what this is supposed to be relating to, we can get the querier. So if we type in querier, we get querier. And this is just going to be a object, it's not even a class. So we can start off with casting this to another class. I mean, this is not going to be an actor, so we can cast it to an actor to begin with. And this actor then we can get an actor location from. Because when we have it as an object, we can't get a location from it. With this location here, we can actually break it, and then that reveals our x, y, and z. And equally over here, we can make over here, which will then give us the x, y, and z uh, to create a new vector. So we want to... Um, we're going to put a value here that's hard coded. Let's say 150. Let's see what that looks like. This will be the height of uh, the, the drawing, the, the sphere that we draw to debug and see where our point is. 
but when it comes to the x and the y uh, we can use these like so which means that we need to plug in our x and our y like so because the position of the character and their offset gives us the the, the vector the location for which to uh, draw this uh, initial location essentially so now we just need to make sure that all this works so we'll have the loop body over there uh, we'll make sure that we have this casted can do it something like this i guess and we'll clean this up a little bit later but for now it's essentially we're setting our midpoint first then we're casting a query to an actor. Then we start doing the looping and we do the double looping and we do all the mathematical offsets and we draw the debugs where they're supposed to be being. And yeah, that's essentially all that we need for the first step. We can make these radius a little bit smaller, maybe 50. We can make it a color that's a little bit easier to see, maybe something red. Uh, we can make the duration something like five seconds and a thickness of two, so it's fairly clear to see. Um, so this will this will currently not uh, generate any spheres for us uh, as points. This will just be drawing these debugs. Uh, so we can try that out and see how that looks. So if we go to our Let's see our query there find cover locations and if we go to our generators we should be having our cover locations here now and i think if we make sure that it's type point just like we had it set to in the generator i think that this should probably be fine like this if we try and do uh, if we disconnect these for now and just run an EQS query, query uh, just to test it out and then we take the was it find cover locations that we named it find cover locations it is and uh, let's see where did I go there we go so find cover locations uh, like so and single best item is fine. So this is essentially all it's going to be doing and then we can put in a waste to just not make it hammer it too much. We can have it for three seconds. So it will be running the query, which should be printing out the, the draw debugs and then it should be waiting and then it should be, or it will do this as long as it doesn't fail. Not entirely sure if it will fail or not since we haven't completed it. We can see what happens here. So we will play. Okay, we can see the, the spheres immediately. So the AI over there has now generated these different spheres and they should be three meters in between each other. So this is the, the base grid that we will be creating. And then each of these points will be the start point that will be drawn towards the cover target, which will be the player in this case. Then. So that's working as intended for now. Uh, so we can... Maybe we want to clean this up even further, I'm thinking. Uh, let's do it like this. Let's create a... Let's promote this to a local variable. Like so, and we'll call this local query, like so. Disconnect this over here. And we will mark all of this stuff over here, drag it away. So we'll have all of this for our point one over here. 
think so. Let's see, can we collapse this? I haven't tried that inside of these. Collapse to... Collapse nodes, just collapse it, I guess. So this will be... Um, what did we do inside here? Doesn't look like it's too happy about the number of points here. Let's not mess with it too much now. Let's uh, expand that. Let's keep it like this. Why is it? Okay. Uh, create local variable. Okay, something obviously is not very happy about that whole situation. I should not have. Uh, We'll do this. Replace with midpoints. Replace with local querier. We'll compile. Since now we have two different uh, variables called the same thing here, we're gonna be deleting them, I guess, like so. Just to clean it up. I hope you didn't follow my, <laughs> my steps for doing this, so you had to do this cleaning yourself as well. Uh, anyway, so that's the first point, first part. And then as a second part over here, we'll go through the loop here. Also, now since I removed this axis variable, we lost it over here. So we'll copy it back here. Like so. And we don't need anything more, I think, there. So that's fine. So we can just move this. Oops, I wanted that one too. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Like so. So we'll put a reroute node over here. So it becomes a little bit more clean. So the first step is we're determining the midpoints and we're setting the local query. Then later on we're doing over here the same thing that we talked about earlier, which is generating the starting positions to trace from uh, with our actual location of our query as the base. Uh, the next part is to do the actual line tracing towards uh, the character. So we're going to be making use of the character that we has, have as our cover target. And we're going to be getting the location for that. Like so. Again, we will be coming back to set, actually setting this a little bit later. Uh, we'll be int implementing an interface for this to be okay. And what we want to do in a step here is we want to make a line trace a channel like so. And we want to have our character as the destination for the trace. So we'll plug in our character's location here now. And we will be, for debugging purposes, be using uh, persistent. Actually, persistent might not be good. Might want to type duration or for one frame. Let's try persistent. We'll, we'll tweak it later on if it becomes too obnoxious. It should be fine. Uh, but the start location for this will be the actual location that we managed to get over here. So we need to have each of these locations be tracing over here. So to do that, we can, we can have, still have this uh, draw the box sphere here, that's fine. We can have our local vectors and add them in here. We'll do it like so. So each of these different points that we have as our start location, we will be adding to this array over here. 
which means that when we're going over here, we can now loop through and trace all of these pl different places. So we'll do a local vector and loop on it. Like so. And each array element will be the start position. Let's get our return node a little bit out of the way. So the result of this is hopefully going to be that uh, we hit an obstacle is the point. So let's start off by creating a few obstacles. Then we can take this box over here, for example, and we can scale it a little bit. We can scale it along this axis. We can scale it a little bit along this axis. We can drop it down a little bit. That looks like a half cover. That's good enough. We can drag it over here. We can reposition it. We can get rid of these staircases. And then we just multiply out a few of these different uh, covers. Something like that is fine, I think. We can rotate it a little bit as well. Like so. Um, so now we have a few covers here which we can make use of. And we want these ones to be the obstructions then. So let's go back to our generator again. And what we want to do is we want to check if this is hitting something. Like so. If it is hitting something, we want to check what that is. So we break this, res this result. And we can again do a draw the bug sphere to see what, what is the result from this. Where, where are we hitting? And we can use the impact location or the impact point as the center. We can have the radius to be something 50 was a little bit big, so let's try 30. And since we used red, let's try something else. We can try green. And duration, let's try five seconds. And thickness, two. Something like that. So the hope now is that it will hit uh, some of the, um, uh, the obstacles and then we will be drawing a sphere to show that we're doing that. The problem now is that we don't actually have this target to uh, work against. So we need to start implementing something for that. So we go to our soldier folder create another blueprint class, we'll make it, actually, we want to make an interface. So blueprint interface, we'll call it BPI. We call it, um, oh, I don't know. Let's try cover target. Seems okay. We open that up and we just create a function called get cover target. So, and we want to have an output from this, which we want to be an actor reference. And let's call it cover targets. That should be fine. So we'll go to our uh, AI character in this case me for me it's the blueprint soldier over here and uh, go to class settings and we will add an interface here so the BPI cover target so now we have the interface over here which we can right click and choose to actually double click on it creates a function for it so it wants to have the target uh, to cover from as a placeholder, to make it easy for us, we can get an active by class and then later on we can change this to something that is not as crude as this. We can get a target from our uh, blackboard, for example. But just to check if this works, we'll do this, we'll plug it in here and we'll call the third person character because that is what the player is. So this is the character we want to cover from. 
so as our first point over here, what we want to do then is we want to make sure that we're getting this, this target. Uh, and how do we do that? Well, we need to have uh, our querier tell us. So we can get the querier again. Again, now we haven't actually casted this yet, but this isn't really necessarily for this point. So we can just say uh, get target this, get cover target, like so. And then we have this being set as our local cover target. So now we don't really need to implement this if we don't want to, then it will just be blank and uh, we don't have any validations that will interrupt this of course right now, but we could uh, if we wanted to. Uh, having the interface allows us to also not do a cast to it. So now we have our covered target. We have its location then, we can trace towards it. We can try and do the traces from the locations of our other vectors. So let's see if that actually works out right now. Um, let's see. see what is happening here now. So we're going to the tree and we seem to be running our query. So that's good. But we don't seem to be drawing out our spheres anymore. Did I change something? Uh, we should be drawing those out over there. Since I obviously broke something now, let's just go one step at a time. So we'll go do a print and we'll see if it prints out a character over here. This should hopefully be it printing out the third person character that we have in the level. So it's printing out third person character up in the top left. That's good. That's still working. And after that we do the whole setting local query here and getting the midpoints. Don't see any issue why that should be going wrong. Uh, da, 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 midpoint. Although something possibly broke when we did the collapsing of the nodes, I guess. Uh, one number point minus one divided by two sets as midpoint. Let's just be super uh, cautious here and check and see. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5. That doesn't seem right. It should be... Ah, number of points has been reset. So we have three here before. So that's likely what's causing this issue then. So if we remove this now. Check our other default values, number per axis. That one doesn't need to have anything, doesn't need. Midpoint is calculated, point distance is three meters and that one is set. So, okay, let's try them. Now we have all these different points here. You can see that are drawing their different traces to the character. And if we were to be over here, you can see some of them are now hitting the, the cover. We can see that some of them are actually getting over the cover, which is not ideal, I guess. So we could either change the... What's happening is uh, the points here are at 150, which seems to be sort of where the, the ground is. And then they're going to be tracing towards the middle of the character, because that's where its actual location is. So it's going to be slightly upward. So depending on how far away we are, uh, for more of them are going to be colliding because it won't be raised as far high up above the ground. So we could either 
have a different calculation to where we search when it comes to the character. We could have it going like straight uh, along the ground if we wanted to, or we can change the height of these different uh, obstacles. There are different ways to solve this issue, but this is just for demonstration purposes, so this should probably be fine. Now you see that it's uh, hit, most of them are hitting uh, the, the cover. And that's good. That's the first part done, sort of, of the logic. Now we can see that they are hitting exactly where the cover is. And that might not be ideal, but uh, it's probably fine. Um, so we'll move on to the next part then, which is that we're going to be doing another line trace. So out of these results that we had over here, we want to have those results uh, be used for the next part. So for the next part, we're going to be doing another line trace by channel. And this time we're not going to be doing by visibility, we're going to do by camera. And we're gonna have the start point be the impact location from before. So we can break this vector because we're going to be manipulating it a little bit. And we can actually hook up this execution node. So after the draw debug sphere, we go to this uh, line trace over here. Now we could be handling this in a different sequence node. The issue then would be that we need to uh, keep track of all of these points. And we might actually do that to clean it up in the end. But uh, for now, let's do this and see how it ends up. Um, what we want to do is we want to have the location that we get over here, our collision point, and we want to say we want to look a little bit further up. So let's say we want to add to the Z, the Z, and we say we want to look uh, how far up should we be looking, depending on the height of the Let's say 80 centimeters. So we, we put an 80 in here. And we'll make this make vector over here. And we'll just plug in these values. So the start location is where we hit before, but we add 80 to the height of the, the start location. The end location of, the, of this should be our targets we want to hide from. Again, it's actor location, like so. And again, just for visibility's sake, we can draw some more debug spheres to show you what is being done. Um, however, what we want to do is we want to check a few things. We want to check, for example, well, first of all, uh, that we're actually getting a hit. That's one condition. Another condition we want is that it is the correct actor. So we can add another branch over here. We can say that our hit result, the hit actor should be equal to our local cover target, because that's a requirement for us. So we can add that there. So only when both of these uh, requirements are met, then we want to draw a debug sphere. And we want to draw this where we, whoop, whoops, why, what did I do now? Promote the local variable, okay, that's fine. Uh, we want to get it from over here. I want to get the impact point, like so, and then we can do that. And since we have now used the other colors, red and green, let's try a blue one for this one. Radius 30 is fine, duration 5, 2, this all seems fine to me. So let's see what happens now then. So now we have the, the drawings being done. Now you can see that what's happening is we're getting the green spheres 
those are being calculated further and going up into the air and then they're drawing a, another sphere towards the character actually are they no i have done something erroneous here i think let's see what i've done wrong so what we used over here is impact point then we went up used that as a start location and used our character as the destination that seems right but it doesn't seem like it is drawing where i expected it to or maybe not okay persistent the line by trace we won't have the debugging on on that one it wasn't on let's see if it's actually drawing correctly like i expected to because it should be coming from high above now we can see the lines that it's drawing so the first step is again the the start points then we draw lines from those towards the character if they impact an obstacle we get these green spheres if we get the green sphere we draw 80 above from the sphere towards the character and if that hits the character we consider that a blue target a blue sphere being drawn and then we realize that the green target that we had to begin with is a valid target for us to use as a cover location essentially so one of the issues with that is that the green spheres were sort of close by the um, the cover. It, they didn't leave a whole lot of space to hide behind. So we might want to fix that a little bit by adding some distance to our impact point. So we'll add a vector to it and what we'll do is we'll add the normal which is the directionality of where the uh, impact has been. So we'll multiply this one and we can multiply it by a float. So something like, I don't know, 30 centimeters is probably fine. Uh, then we add it to this one and we add it over here and have that as our new hit. If we run behind, we should be seeing that we have positions that are a little bit more like what, what we expect. Uh, so yeah, so now we have actually calculated what could potentially be valid locations for us to run and take cover from. So let's actually uh, make use of that. And we can do that by going over here and let's see here, we have a loop for this one. And then that one. Yeah, so if we end up here, then we have determined that this is a good hit. So this is the hit that we want to add to our end result. And adding to our end result is not difficult at all. We just use a um, pre-existing node. It's called add generated. And then you have vectors and actors, but we're going to return vectors. We'll add this and the generate vector that we're going to be adding here is going to be this exact value that we calculated over here with the normal adding i realize that this looks a little bit messy but hopefully you have been able to follow along all of these steps and after we're done with that we just need to return and although we don't have a return currently we probably should be adding one over here so after that we're done essentially and now if we run we should hopefully be able to see these points as well so if we put remove behavior tree we show eqs we go behind here we should hopefully be generate okay we have a lot of we might not be able to see it let's remove our debug spheres for now and uh, yeah let's see so we want to do this trace over here to the line trace over there so disconnect the draw the bug spheres there. We'll remove this one. Put it in there. I'm just disconnecting them now. You could of course remove them uh, unless you want to keep them, of course, because they are useful information-wise for you uh, to see what's happening if you want to do other tweaks. Uh, but yeah. 
So now we should have been removed all the debug spheres. Uh, we can keep the the lines for now, I suppose. Don't really matter that much. But yeah, so we enable EQS and we run behind here and we'll see if we get any... There you see. So it's generating some points now and it's determining uh, winners also uh, on occasion. And how it's determining winners is if we go back to our EQS query now, uh, we're getting our points generated by this, but we might want to have a determination of which points are the best. So for example, maybe we want to have a cover that is as close as possible to the target so we get a good shot on him and it's easier to hit. So we could add a test for distance. Now adding a test for distance will make it so that a test that's further away is higher. You see it's preferring greater. So we can do a linear inverse and then we'll get like prefer lesser. So that means it's going to take a closer one. So if we go behind here, we can see hopefully that we get some points. All right, I need to actually enable this so we can see. So let's see if we can get... Uh, the bug actor is currently set to none. Uh, in, unless you don't know. If you want to get out into um, a mode where you can like select things from the world outliner here, you just press Shift F1. And we need to find our AI soldier, which is this one. So we're actually debugging that one. Now you can see that uh, we're getting points over here. None of them are being set to winner though. It's a bit interesting. And then if we run back here, hopefully we should be getting multiple points. Can't see that we're getting any multiple points yet. There we get multiple points. Ah, my bad. I probably set uh, the test is filter and score. We just wanted to have a score. Yeah, so it's actually we don't want to be filtering. We have already done the filtering with the, our generator actually. Yeah, so we've generated the points that are of interest. We just need to determine out of the ones that we have available to us, uh, which ones are the ones that we want to take into consideration. So now we get a bunch of them and it's getting one of them to be set as a winner, although not quite the one I was expecting, but let's see what happens if we go behind over here. Maybe a bit further. So now we're getting points. Uh, both at the first and the the second obstacle although it seems to be uh, let's see uh, da, 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 inverse linear prefer lesser distance to querier okay so here i did the mistake of having the context of the querier what we want to have here is a context of actually the person that we want to kill uh, not kill the person we want to hide from so let's create a context actually. Um, so environmental query context blueprint base. Uh, EQC enemy context. Like so. And in here we will just be overriding a provide single actor should be fine. And just to make this easy, although this is not the best way to do this. Um, we're gonna get the actor by class and get the third person character just to see that it works. And if we do, we're gonna return that. So third person character. So. So now we have a context. We go back to our uh, query. We have the frame of reference here is the querier, which is the, the, the AI itself. We don't want to have a point that's closest to the AI. We want a point that's closest to the person we're trying to take the cover from. So we change the context over here to enemy context. Where did I name it? We, I, you saw there I had multiple contexts because I've been doing tutorials earlier. Um, let's see. So context of the enemy, enemy context, this one, and prefer lesser. So now we should be getting a point that is closer to the character so we get an easy shot on him if we can. 
So you can see that the one that seems to be the closest over there would be preferred. If we were over here, so multiple points are generated, you can see that it wants to get the one that's uh, in the closest cover rather than the one furthest cover. Uh, so that seems to be working and that's good. So let's actually make the character do something about this then. So doing a mini simulation of what we have done so far, we can do something like uh, create a sequence composite here and have that one run to the query and then run to the wait. And in between that, we can also have a move to. That means we have to ha actually have a location to move to or a character to move to, or a key, I mean, for this location to move to. And we can, let's create a new key just to have something. So we'll get a vector and we'll call this our cover location. And then we'll go back to the behavior tree and we can see that the result, which is a single best item in this case, it's going to take the, the best winner from it. We're going to be setting that uh, cover location as the result of that. And then we can have a move to. And the move to should be to that cover location. And then we should be waiting three seconds. So let's see how this plays out now with the character actually trying to do something about this. So now we have a AI that is trying to find the closest cover for it to get into position to shoot us from. And that seems to be working fine. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.